Shabbat Shalom, giving all praise and glory to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who you say his name is going to be that forever and a memorial to all generations. We give all praise and glory to his holy name in the name of the Lord and Savior. Um, as always, I'm going to start off with Colossians 3 and 17. Bringing everything in the spirit of the most high. Going to the most high's throne. Why it says, and whatsoever you do, whatever you do in action, in word or deed, whatever you say, whatever action you do, do all. In the name of the known Savior. Giving thanks to the most high. We thank the most high and the father. He's our father. That's how we thank the most high. By Hamashiach Yahushai. Because he told us in Ephesians 5 and 20. Giving thanks always for all things. That's everything. Unto the Most High and the Father, as we just seen in Colossians 3.17. In the name of our power, Hamashiach Yavashai. In the name of the Lord and Savior. We say, Bahashama Hamashiach Yavashai. So, all that we say and do is going to be in the name of the Lord and Savior. We're going through the throne of the Most High. That's how we reach the Most High. He said, no man comes to the Father but by him. In St. John 14 and 6. It's all... A formula that's already been created that if you understand it, then spiritually, then you'll understand how to operate to reach the most high. And remember this, which a lot of people don't even think about. And that's the fact that when he came on the earth, Amashiach Yavashai, in the flesh, from the spirit of the most high, being the spirit of the most high, being the angel of the most high, the only begotten son of the most high. There was no New Testament. But everybody going to the New Testament acting like it's something new. But when he walked to earth, you, you about being Mashiachi and being his, he didn't have the books of Paul. He didn't have the book of Revelation. He didn't have the books of Peter and James and Timothy. All these books did not exist when he walked to earth. He dealt with the law and the prophets. That's why people say they look at a Mashiach and they don't want to believe in him. He's telling you whatever he's saying, the understanding of the law and the prophets. Because that's all he had to go by. Understand this and overstand this because most people it goes over their head. Poop. I got to keep repeating, repeating it because we've been programmed to turn your neighbor and say this to the religious instruction to the Negroes in the United States of America. I don't care what tribe you are. You still come from the waters of Judah. Judah the head tribe. So everybody going to be coming off of the vibration of Judah. Point blank. Point blank. Everybody want to be like us. They want to be us. But they want to be like us. Because we the salt of the earth. Point blank. Flavor. Any way you look at it. So in saying that. You got to look at it. He came from the tribe of Judah. Hebrews 7, 14, for this evidence of fact that our power, Mashiach Yavashai, sprang out of Judah, Jacob's fourth-born son. Our forefather Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, fourth-born son. He came out of the lineage of Judah. You see? So when he came on earth, he just gave the understanding of what they had to go by. So you got to go back to when he's speaking and say, wow, okay, he's saying this, but there's no New Testament. There's only the law and the prophets. So if you don't know the Old Testament, how are you going to understand what he's saying? You act like it's something new. Like he made void the Old Testament. When that's all he had to go by. Period. So, in saying all that, as we read the New Testament, we got to understand they only had the Law and the Prophets. Every Sabbath day, they went into the Law and the Prophets. Point blank. They didn't have this New Testament. They had the Law and the Prophets. These books were compiled approximately 325 A.D. under the Council of Nicaea. And a lot of people, the average person didn't have the scrolls anyway. They didn't even have the scrolls. Only certain people had this Bible. Remember, during the Greek Empire, wicked Antiochus Epiphanes, he was burning the Bible. He was killing everybody that had the Bible. The Old Testament, the Law and the Prophets. That's why here in this day and time, it's almost like the law and the prophets is like taboo. It's like, oh, man, you can't deal with that. You only can deal with the New Testament. And you still don't understand the New Testament. 
Because you don't understand the law and the prophets, what they had to go by. It's crazy, but it's like a programming that has been put upon our people to make your brains polluted. Not brainwashed, but your brains been polluted because the Mosai polluted our brains. Because we didn't want to follow him. So he said, I'm going to give you to a nation, a no people, a foolish nation. Because we made him jealous. So we, hey, his name is Jealous. So he said he's going to make us jealous over a foolish nation, a no people. We're a people. He said, a no people. In Deuteronomy 32 and 21. Here we are now in that condition. So I want to deal tonight with this topic I was just asked to go over. And that is lust. Lust. So we're going to look at it. Let's get the definition first. From the American Heritage Dictionary. It says lust. Intense. Excessive. Or unrestrained sexual desire. First and foremost. Intense, excessive. Or unrestrained sexual desire. An overwhelming craving, intense eagerness or enthusiasm to have an intense desire, especially sexual desire, okay? Lustful. So lust is mainly dealing with desire, your desires. Lustful, lustfully, and lustfulness. Okay, so let's go on to it. I got many different aspects. You know, I was asked to do this, so you got to bear with me because this is a spirit of the moment, but spirit of the most high, as I pray, ask the most high to lead us by the spirit of his spirit. So we're going to go into it. Different aspects of how we need to look at this because it's lust is sinful. Those things are sinful. Look at uh, Job 31. The book of Job 31. Uh, Job 31, and we're going to look at verse 9. If my heart, which is your mind, the way you think, have been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door trying to deal with some other man's woman, first he said, if his mind have been deceived by a woman, Or, if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, trying to get with some other man's woman in adultery, he said, then let my wife grind unto another, and let others bow down upon her. Wow. He said, if I've done this, let, 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 let his wife be with somebody else. And others, that's more than one. Bow down upon her. But well, this is a, hang, a heinous crime. Yeah, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges. For it is a fire that consumes to destruction and would root out all mine and increase. If we do this, that's what he's saying. And understand this. He said, he said for this, this would be really shameful. And a sin to be judged on. He says, for it is a fire that consumes to destruction and would root out all my iniquity. He says, it's a fire that's going to burn to destruction. It's going to root, root out all his harvest, everything that he's grown, everything he's grown to be, from his crops to himself. Take it away. So let's look at, go to the New Testament, so-called New Testament, Matthew 5, the fifth chapter. Matthew, the fifth chapter, and look at verse 27. These are the words of Amashach Yavashach. He said, you have heard that it, is, it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. Now, adultery is a man 
that sees another woman that's married and desire to lay with her, have sex with her. A woman that's married, seeing another man or a man talking to her, and she falls into adultery by laying with him. And the woman is married and go lay with another man. Lust. What are we talking about? Desire. It's an abomination. It's a sin. It's wickedness. He said, verse 28, But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So you look at a woman, and you know she's another man's woman, and you look at that, 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 that uh, sexual demon that's in you, it appears, and some don't even know that they have it, that it's being seen, and people can see it, that have an eye to see. He's talking about a married woman. Can we talk about adultery? And that's what adultery is. I just explained it to you. So she belongs to another man. And here you are looking at her, knowing and you, have, you have people that know the woman is married. And look at her in a lustful way, desiring her, where the spirit comes out. Even a woman can see it. Now, if a woman is Horace, then she going to gravitate to that and maybe lay with the man eventually. That's why he's saying, but I said to you that whosoever looking on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. That look is a sexual demon that's within them. Oh, that comes out. You can see it. If you have the eyes to see spiritually. And a lot of them don't even know it. You gotta shake it off of them. But they lessen after another man's woman and just their looks. Might not ever get a chance to be with her, but just to look, that sexual look, that sexual lustful Desire, that lust demon. Looking at her like, oh, I wish I could get her. And then some go after her. The women got to be strong too. You and you held accountable too. That's like when the woman came to a Mashiach that was shy when they, no, they brought her to him. And they said, the woman that's committed adultery. And he just rolled on the ground, rolled on the ground. He looked up at him. From the elder to all the way down to the youngest. And say he without sin cast the first stone. Now the law says. The man and the woman. Should have been brought before the judge. Or my shock was shot. But where the man's at? He wasn't there. And they start peeling off from the eldest one. Because you know he done did a whole lot of things. The longer you live the more you done did. From the eldest all the way to the youngest. He looked up when nobody was there. And he told the woman sin no more. That's mercy and grace right there. But we have to have mercy and grace amongst each other also. Instead of so much, so, so trying to condemn, and you don't have the right to condemn, you ain't got no power to condemn, to bring forth the, the actual uh, law. That's why the uh, Mosiah gave us mercy and grace. So we got to learn how to have mercy and grace on each other too. That don't mean you can't correct no one, you tell them they off, whatever, but you still got to have that love or that mercy and grace because the Mosiah is going to have mercy on Jacob. You see? Ain't nobody being put to death for this act at this time. But oh, it's coming around. That's why he said, verse 29, and if thy right eye offend thee, you looking at that woman lustfully and she belongs to somebody else, pluck it out, he said, and cast it from thee. Stop doing it. Stop looking at her. Stop looking at this woman and that woman lustfully. You know they belong to another man. Turn your head away. If you got that lust, turn your head away. Work on yourself. Get yourself together before it's too late. He tell you, hey, if you're right, yo, if your eye is looking over there at it and you lusting for it, he said, cast it out. Take your eye out. He said, take your eye out. 
That's how serious this is. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Hear that? Cast that one eye out rather than your whole body be cast into hell to burn like I always tell you. To burn in that hell fire. Ain't nobody talking about that. That's why ain't nobody afraid of the most high. Ain't nobody afraid that they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Everybody think they're righteous as ever. And going into the lake of fire. Because that ain't marvelous in the eyes of the most high. Listen. And if that right hand offend thee, cut it off. He said cut it off. And cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish. One of your members should perish. Your hand should perish. And not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Then you know this is how serious it is. That's the judgment. And he's going to be the one judging. The Mashiach that was shot. Judging under the power of the Most High. Representing the Most High. Hmm. You hear that? So, these are scenarios that we got to look at to be able to understand and understand how we got to conduct ourselves. Got to change. I keep telling you, it's a change, being born again, becoming a new man, a new woman, and a new creature. All are the same. But it's all about change. We got to be examples so the whole world can see. According to thus say the most highest word in righteousness. And not because somebody feel that this way it should be. It's going to hurt my feelings. Nobody care about no feelings. Most I have no respect to persons. So you're going to be rolling with him. How are you going to have respect to persons? This ain't, this ain't about no respect to persons. Period. It's about what the most high said. And he wrote these laws. I don't went over it. He wrote these laws with the finger of the most high. So y'all don't want to deal with it. Then you ain't dealing with the most high. That's, that's like he did all this for nothing. How are you going to go to church and then you go tell the most high in your own way to say that we are under the laws, you're going to tell him that it don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter what he has done. Come on. Make that make sense to me. And anyone can join in this. Make that make sense to me. And you roll it with him. You're going to call on him and you, you already said it don't matter. Or some of you to come up with your own little understandings. Or what we going on so over so far means in ignorance, not really knowing. Sad. Look at uh uh this is very important. Um go to Jeremiah the eighth chapter. Uh, and we're gonna reverse Jeremiah eight and eight. It says, how do ye say we are wise? How are you going to say you have wisdom, which is probably application of knowledge, and the law of the Most High is with us? The law of the Most High is with us. Lo, certainly in vain may he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. I was going to say, how are you going to dismiss what it is that the Most High wrote and had holy men write as they were moved by the Holy Spirit of the Most High? Certain is in vain made that he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are shamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected what? The word of the Most High. You hear that? They have rejected the word of the Most High and what wisdom is in them. So you reject the word of the Most High. You reject Kamashiach Yahweh first and foremost. Who is the word of the Most High? Who is the the, the word of the Most High, hearing the voice of the Most High, that's bringing forth the word of the Most High, you reject him, even though you think you call it on him, you reject him, so you reject the Most High. It says, therefore will I give their wives unto others. Mm, mm, mm. Men, us, men, therefore will I give their wives unto others. And their fields, our, our vegetables, everything that we have growing, cattle, everything that eats of the ground, and, to them that shall inherit them. He already told us this. Over and over again. For everyone from the least even to the greatest is given to covetousness. 
from the prophet even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. Hear that? In lies and deceit, in falsehoods. This is very important that we see this and understand this and understand this for real. So, from there, let's look at uh, how how worldly this is in lust. Because we, we're dealing with the spirit of Esau. We have to be de-edemonized. And some of you are still following that same suit. Or being brain polluted. You ain't brainwashed. Stop saying that because of my shake up shy said in St. John 15 and 3. Now you are clean through the word that I speak unto thee. So if you ain't following this with understanding from Genesis to Revelation and everything in between, you learn it, you live it in your plan in your life, then how are you brainwashed? Please tell me. That's why I say you gotta, I know coming to truth, I say, wow, I gotta think opposite of the way this world has everybody thinking. And once I start thinking opposite, I start questioning what everybody's saying. Like y'all say kids, certain things you say kids, what's kid? A baby goat? That's that symbol. They the, they the Daniel's 821. First, uh, the, the, the first king is, is called a goat. It's the king of the goats. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. Alexander the Greek. That's why they call them, they're, they're kids, kids. It's a baby goat. That's their symbol. Five point star. You see? Two horns, the floppy ears, and the goatee. We have children. We are the children of Israel. So therefore, we cannot be the children if you call it, if you the kids. And some of you grown kids. Because you still eat them or not. You still think the way they would have you to think all the way from 1620 under the religious structure to the Negroes in the United States of America. This is how we're going to program you to think until this day. I challenge you to. That is not happening. This day, still follow the same way and Willie Lynch against each other. Just looking, looking to pick against each other from the rich to the not having, the poverty stricken ones, to the light to the to the dark, to the old to the young, you name it. Man and woman, men and men against each other, women and women against each other. Women and women don't even where the, where the womanhood at? <laughs> Women always want to step into the zone of a man, but where the womanhood at? Where the women that's, that's gathered together to help build this nation and the things that women can do? It's all divided. But you got a desire, you got a lust for the things that you desire in your own life, but not the desire of the body of Amashek Abishai, the kingdom of heaven, which is in us, within us. You've been given specific directions, instructions. It's there. Are you following that? No. But you got to lust to do whatever you want to do for yourself. But we're a nation. It's got to be about the nation. Desires. That's all it is. Desires. That's why I say it covers a lot. More so than just sexual. It's about lust and how we think about what we desire ourselves. That's contrary to working in the kingdom of the Most High. And to make it to the kingdom that your name could be written in the book of life. Straight up. That's what it's all about. So, because this world, go to 1 John, the second chapter, and we're going to look at verse uh, 16. Well, let's look at 15 first. It say, love not the world. Love not the world, right? Okay, let's see whose world it is. Second Ezra 6 and 9. Let's see what it says. For Esau... The biblical name for the indigenous so-called white man is the end of the world. So he said, love not the world, as I keep saying, in the spirit. Your mind is brain polluted if you love this world. He said, love not the world. So when you hear John 3.16, they always go there for the last, the last stance. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, right? What world? He loved the world of Israel. That's it. That's it. He said, Jacob have I loved. Show me where he loved anybody else. That he says, Jacob is the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. Here we see, it says, whose world would be the superpower of the earth 
at the end of the earth that we're in now. And it says, 2 Ezra 6 and 9, for Esau, the biblical name for the so-called white man, from Genesis 25 and 25, is the end of the world. He just said, love not the world. Whose world? What well, if he said it, okay, if you don't want to deal with it now, let's go back to when he's talking. What were you talking about? Who was in power? So y'all even think about his story. He give you his story. So who was in power? This way after Alexander the Greek. So who's in power? The Romans, so-called white men, so-called Italian called Cajuns, right? Superpower of the earth. He said, love not the world. And he's letting us know that they're going to be ruling in the end of the world. Esau is the end of the world, right? He's saying, love not the world. What part of that you don't get? Whose world is it? It's Esau. Therefore, if you've been Edomanized, then that's a certain thing that you got to deal with to be de-Edomanized so that you can think right and your name could be written in the book of life. This is all about our names being written in the book of life. I challenge anybody to challenge, tell me anything better than that for us, Israel. What's more important than that? Because your name not written in the book of life, where are you going? To the lake of fire. Like he said, hell, that's that lake of fire. That's the judgment. That's what this is all about. I, I, I mean, if it's anything else, I'd like to know, and I'm willing to change. But I know you ain't going to change my mind from that. Because how else are you going into the kingdom of kingdom of uh, that, that Samashiach that was shy, first and foremost, to learn from him for a thousand years? If your name not written in the book of life. You ain't meeting the most high. <laughs> no way. He ain't bringing you out of hellfire. And let you meet him. No. He gonna get rid of all the wicked. That's why we have opportunity now. But it say Esau is the end of the world. Right? He said 1 John 2. 15. Love not the world. So we see that Esau is the end of the world. In 2 Ezra 6 and 9, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. He said no world, he said it that followeth. What follows? Salvation, powers and authority to the Israelites under the power of the Most High of the Mashiach Yavashai, ruling forever and ever and ever. That's it. Whether you want to accept it or not, that's it. And once the Mashiach Yavashai teaches of a thousand years, of the Most High, then the Most High is going to be all in all. He's going to be subject to the Most High, and the Most High is going to be all in all. Everybody going to Bow down to the most high power of Abraham, who had a son named Isaac, who had a son named Jacob, who became the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel forever. Forever and ever and ever. All praise to the most high. Hallelujah to his glorious and holy name. Because he's not recognized. People ain't recognizing him. His name is Jealous. And who's standing up for him? Who really rising up for the most high and not dealing with so much of our people? That's still lost. Still not getting the lost touch commandments. Not seeing this the way they should be and see it spiritually. Carnally, yeah. You got all this to say about things that's carnal, but what about spiritually? The law of the spirit. You can't get to the law of spirit to you. That's why I said, Amash Yaqab Shai, excuse me, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Amashiach. So if you ain't dealing with the law, how you gonna come to him? He, he came here to be an example to show us it could be done. That's why I say, love not the world. The lust of the, excuse me, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. You hear that? Love not the world, neither the things that's in the world. Whose world are we talking about now? Is it our world? Are we ruling? We got power and authority on the earth? Israelites? No. Esau is the end of the world. He's saying love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If any man love this world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's why you hear me say, I hate this world. Because it's not the world of righteousness, but of wickedness. And more and more, as you see, you're going to find the children of the Most High, and you're going to find the children of the devil. When you understand this Bible spiritually. But those that don't, as carnal minded, they're going to look at whatever they're going to look at and say, oh, this is right, when it's wrong. Because that's what the devil is. He's a deceiver. Deceitful and evil person. 
deceitful and evil people. That's devil and devils. Point blank. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. See, they go to the lust of the flesh. That's why we deal with this topic, lust. The lust of the flesh. Intense sexual desires where that lust demon just pulls, just comes out of the pose righteousness. It's against righteousness. Can't help itself. They got to shake, they shake, shake it, get it off of them. But you see it appear. Many times been manifest. Bam. That's somebody else's woman. That lust demon comes out and looks at her. Or they go and try and actually fulfill the, the deed of lust, laying with somebody else's woman. Or women that's married going laying with another man. Well, I like him. I'm going to desire him. Just brain have been polluted. Ain't nobody brain is washed. Because you know the words, you're going to not do these things. And we all, you know, have, 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 have sinned and come short of the glory of the Most High. This is just dealing with this topic, lust. Because we all got something we got to clean up all the time. You see? We got to work on this. This is just a topic that we're dealing with pertaining to this certain topic. Staying on topic and not going somewhere else. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. You already told you about the eyes. You're looking. You already committed adultery with another man's woman. Or women that's married looking at another man. The lust after him. Would desire, desire, want him and winking at him. Or making faces to let him know, oh, I like you. And you with another man. You married to another man. The pride of life, hear that? The pride of life. Pride is opposite of humility. You think you all that. Man, he that exalted himself shall be abased. You're going to be brought down. But he that humbled himself shall be exalted. That's why I show you all the time what's marvelous in the eyes of the Most High. Ezra, understand this, brothers and sisters. Ezra, the prophet Ezra, we didn't have the law. We lost the law of Moses. And the Most High Gave it back to Ezra. And he gave him more than he gave Moses. He said, hey, get us to the wise. Let's hold back. Hold this back. That's why so many mysteries that most people don't understand because they haven't been privileged to it. And once you hear it, it's like, go over your head because you want to hold on to the same things that you have learned. Like you say, some people, they say, some, oh, they still in the 80s. They still in the 70s. They still in the 90s. They ain't never left 2000. 2000 break came, came and left. There was a lot of them. They never left there. They, were, they know from whatever they learned from the time, this period of time, backwards. And they never, the spirit never moved them forward to continue to give them understanding of mysteries that's here in this Bible. Mysteries that the most I didn't gave them to give them understanding. Which is a spiritual thing, but with all that getting, get what? Understanding. Understanding what? The word of the most high. The Mashiach was shy. Hmm. Isn't he the word of the Most High? But see, that right there, even saying that goes over your head because it's like, hey, he, Most High have a voice. Everybody trying to put the Most High with the angel of the Most High that always spoke to us. I say, hey, what do you say? He's going to send you the spirit. The spirit is what? An angel of truth. I will not leave you comfortable. I'm going to see even the, the comforter. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will come to you. He said, I will come to you. And he came in Acts the second chapter. As what? The spirit of the Most High. Who he was before he came in the flesh. But you're saying it is so simple, but it's like going over people's heads because they can't really see him in the volume of the book spiritually and as a spirit, as an angel. That's why he's telling you. Listen. Verse 16 again. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father. See? What you got, people bragging about what they got, material things and so forth. That's, that don't mean nothing to the Most High. And what we got to deal with, everything you got here going to burn. It's a lake of fire. We're just living in it. He ain't burned it up yet. Sometimes he just play around and burn a lot of places up. Especially out in California, they just burn every year. Angels come and... And they go to the edge of the freeway, be burning. And, make, and, and he had a wind come and make big, giant 
fireballs and go over the freeway and, and go out there and burn another neighborhood down. That's what's, that's, those are spirits. As any fireman that ever fought them fires say, wow, it's just like, it's alive. Because it is alive. That's the first spirit that the most high identifies as the spirits that's made for vengeance. Fire. Because he's consuming fire. It's of the most high. But people don't see that. That's why he's going to give him a name. His name going to be above every name. He's going to be all in all forever and ever and ever. That's what this is all about. Not about us. He said he can raise up some stones to be his people. This is about the most high. In the end, when all this go down, you're going to see where you at in exalting yourself. Because some of you exalt yourself over the most high. And you about the most high. It's about, you know, I will take the most high, you know, take my sacrifice, or Jesus Christ, whatever your name you use in. It's all about us. He comes in where he fit in, where he fit in. But understand, this name is jealous. Understand this. You better fear the most. You better be afraid and scared of him. You ain't afraid or scared of him. You're going to be made to be afraid or scared of him. Bet you that. That's a guarantee. Every last one that you that can hear my voice, you're going to be made to be afraid of the most high. You're going to be made to be scared of the most high. He's going to get him a name. Remember he did all the plagues in Egypt? He got him a name. It wasn't because of our righteousness. It ain't going to be because of our righteousness and we're going to make it to the kingdom. Wretched and wicked as we are. As a people. Can't even get along. Following the same suit as what the white men would have us to deal with from Willie Lynch. Come in here. Say, hey man, y'all doing it wrong. Let me show you how to make these slaves be under control. As he would have them to be. Until this day. Until this day. Sad, man. We're a sad bunch of wretched, nasty, filthy rags, as the most I call us. We are, as a nation, to this day. That's why we got to change. You can't say you love the world because that's how the world set you up to be. And you're still that way. To this day. All that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, design all the things that you could see, coveting everything you could see, including men's women, including women that's married, looking at another man to lie with them and find out there ain't nothing. All you do is set yourself up for hell fire, straight up. We ought to learn. We got to change. In the lust of the eyes, everything you see, you desire. Lust is desire, too. That's what it's mainly saying, desires. Whether it's sexual desires or you coveting something that you see, somebody else have. How much that costs? You can't, you can't, I mean, look at the things that you hear people, how much that costs? But you know you can't buy it if you knew how much it costs. What difference do it make? Then if you have it, then it's like, oh, well, well you, you're jealous of this person. You desire, that's lust. You lusting after it. You desire it, but you know you can't get it, so now you jealous of this person. Because you can't get it. But you don't know how they got it. Some people got to work hard. Some people got two, three jobs to have something nice. Working hard as ever. And you got those that don't have nothing, sitting around lazy, not doing nothing. Going to be jealous of somebody that's worked and worked hard for what they have. It's crazy, man. It's still Willie Lynch. In effect. Hating on your brother, hating on your sister. It's wrong. Lusting. And the pride of life. The pride of life. Most high said pride is hateful before man and the most high. Because it's opposite of being humble. You're going to be brought down. You're prideful. That's why he told us. Second Ezra 8. Second Ezra 8 and 50. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time, the second Ezra 8 and 50, for many great miseries shall be done in, to them that in the latter time, this is our time, we in the last days, shall dwell in the world. See, still live with that world. Esau's world. Why? Because they have walked in great pride. See that? Walked in great pride. He's telling us, I already know, the Past, the present, and the future. It's right there. Misery's going to be upon people because they walked in great pride. 
And those that are miserable are going to try and make somebody else miserable. You know, you know what I'm saying? Misery loves company. So they're miserable, so they're going to try to make somebody else miserable behind how their misery is going down. And people don't realize you're sick, you ain't going to get well. Most I go, you ain't most I the one that made you sick. He made us sick. He made he the one that he he the one that wound and make he heal us. You see? So you think your wounds gonna you gonna be okay and you steady being miserable and wanna see somebody else miserable and don't understand the power that's in Baha Shama Mashiach You don't understand the power that you have as an Israelite? I'm telling you. He said, "In go to uh, hold on. It's very important because when you look at, he said, love not the world. When you really look at this." When Amashiach Abishai come back to this earth and he's going to put, let's look at it. Let's go to it. Let's look at it. When he come back to this earth with his holy angels. Go to Matthew 25 and 31. So you see what I keep saying about uh, being Edomanized. Having the mindset of the world. Because this is the world. Esau is the end of the world. It's his world. The curriculum that you learn in school is his curriculum. If you have your own school, you still got to go by the specific uh, reasoning that he have for the curriculum of those children that's going to be taught certain things that he says you have to teach them for them to actually graduate. So Matthew 25, 6, 31. Matthew 25 and 31. When the Son of Man, who was a Mashiach of Shai, shall come in his glory. He coming in his glory. He the glory of the Most High. He's the glory. But you don't see that either, right? Nobody ever seen the Most High, but they seen his glory. So he's going to come in the glory of the Most High. And all his holy angels, 200 million angels, with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Then he's going to sit upon the powers and authority of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. So everybody's going to be gathered before Mashiach Yahweh Shai. And he's going to bring forth a judgment. And he shall separate them. This is what he's going to do. First and foremost, he's going to separate all the nations. One from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. All we're dealing with is sheep and goats here. But he's going to separate everybody, all the nations, as a sheep divided his sheep. I mean, a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats, okay? Because the Most High divided all the nations in the beginning. It, it's an integration is not of the Most High. Only in America. What did he do? Deuteronomy 32 and 8. When the Most High divided to the nations, see? That's why he's coming back to separate all the nations because they all intermingle, especially here in America. He's not with this. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance. Meaning every nation had a certain land mass that the Most High gave them to be on. A man of that nation and a woman of that nation to procreate their nation. When he separated the sons of Adam, he can't say it, I mean divided, separated. This is what the Most High is doing when he come back. Why he got to separate them? When he Most High already separated, divided all the nations. When he separated the sons of Adam, we all come from Adam, either Shem, Ham, or Japheth that created everything.